Hey everyone, this is Mayur. Welcome to MLWorks. In this video, we'll talk about Task Distributed. It is a lightweight framework for distributed computing in Python. And uh, this is similar to something uh, you run a cluster in Kubernetes and you have worker nodes and you connect with the cluster and you assign tasks to the worker nodes. So what we do here is we'll have a local cluster uh, using client will be creating that and use that client will talk to scheduler and the task scheduler and that scheduler will assign tasks to the workers. So let's get started. So first what we have here is uh, we are importing a task distributor and we put the client which will communicate with the plus, uh, scheduler. So first we run this. So when we run this client is equal to client. Okay. In the back end it will create a cluster. It will create a scheduler as well and also workers will be assigned. So we run that. Then we'll see those information as I mentioned here. So we have a cluster object created which is client and the cluster information has this is a local cluster which has four workers, 32 GB RAM, 16 CPU cores and user processors and there is a scheduler information. Now this is the IP of the scheduler which will the client will communicate with the scheduler and the scheduler will communicate with the workers. So if you see here we have workers here. So there are four workers which each one will have its own IP address and as uh, allocated memory and everything and also GPU is uh, available across the core workers. So what we do here is since the scheduler is IP uh, port is changed we'll just copy this and paste it here and I also want to show the task dashboard which is here uh, if you go here we'll see this uh, the byte stored per core worker or byte stored CPU occupancy all those things and workers details here uh, out of 32 GB how it is allocated across the workers what is the memory how it is managed and also we'll look at profiling this is one comes when you assign the task you will see the memory utilization all those activity details happening here these are task graph when you run a task in the cluster or uh, on the worker nodes you will not automatically see this graph getting populated so when the tasks are running we'll see how much of the memory is getting used all those details here so logs this is the logs that is running it is running as a system right as a worker so we are getting those logs here now there are mo much more information available here if you want to explore those things are here cpus utilization all those details task stream so let's go back to what uh, notebook okay so we have here our client which is connected to the scheduler now this is scheduler is connected yeah okay now what we have is we have a bunch of functions okay and which we want to execute on a particular worker node okay so we will create this function and we'll map it that will map those function using client and which will be mapped to a particular worker node now I run this function square I run this function negative now what we do is we have two functions first is map which will map the functions or your task to your worker node and then we submit those uh, tasks onto the cluster or those client or the worker nodes I mean and it will run those uh, tasks okay using the submit function so what it will do is here we are passing this square function and a range of thousand numbers which will get squared and we get a list of thousand numbers which are squared from 0 to 999 then we are doing a negative of those uh, list of numbers and then we are combining it together using a submit function. So those are here mentioned here. Now what we do is simultaneously we will look at the task graph here, task train, progress, all those details here. So let me just run this particular function. So one more thing to understand is uh, when this is running in the back end, so this is a sub job that is submitted to the worker node and it will be running in the back end. But though it is running, we'll get an object called as future object, which is nothing but total. Okay, and we'll see that it is taking time. And uh, once the task is completed on the worker, we'll see the total is getting finished. So we'll understand this when we when I run this one. So if you see, this is pending right now. Okay, and in the back end, it is running this function. So all those jobs got populated here. 
and what is the time taken all those stuff will be here mm, can be mentioned here okay if the task or uh, task all these details are present groups okay this is for square function this is for the negative and this is for the sum function and there's some more details which we can look at So these are uh, how the memory got used. Okay, this is it takes less time for me to water run this, so it is we are not able to so see this. Okay, now since I saw uh, earlier we have seen this is pending state, the future object. Now it will be in finished state. Now uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll look at the results of each of those future object. Each these all are future objects. Okay, square, negative, total, all these are future objects. So when we Want to see the complete result? We can do total dot result. We'll see the total results here. Okay. And if you want to get each of the future object, so you can do gather dot square, and you will do the output. We can collapse it here, and we'll see all the squares. One square, two square is four, three square is nine. All those details. Similarly for negative, we'll see here mm -hmm. negative and all these. Are done in the back end, and we'll see the results uh, if you want to what in each individual future object. If you want to look at each of those details, so we'll go back to this place, okay, where we have all these details graph. Okay, so if you see, there are thousand objects. Okay, these are square. The square function is called thousand times, so we see it here. A negative uh, function is called thousand times. All these can be seen here. And each getting mapped from one to one, and then all these results are combined to a sum function. Okay, so this is what is task graph represents. Mm, is there any other details? Uh, we can look at these straight. If I'm able to, the time taken for each of those tasks. Mm, okay. This is the transfer sum. Some of them are square. So when we see this green color line, it represents the square function getting called. This is the negative sum, the negative of that fun, uh, sum square, negative of the square. And this is the sum function, and this is read sum. Okay. So these are like what uh, all these calls that happen in the back end. Okay, like thousands of calls that happen to the square functions and thousands of calls that made to the negative functions. All those are managed on this particular task uh, stream. We can look at that. So this is the time taken for each of those sum rate. How the sum get got gathered? Okay. I think uh, we understood right what basically happened in this uh, whole notebook right. So what happened is first we created a client. Okay, that client will connect with the scheduler and that scheduler will work with the workers. And you will create and submit jobs using client to those uh, cluster or workers using scheduler. So that is the whole flow of Dask distributed. So basically, what happens is when you have a Kubernetes cluster, you will send the IP address here. This client will communicate with the cluster, and that cluster will communicate through scheduler will communicate with the worker nodes. So that's how it happens in Dask distributed framework. So with this, I'll just uh, conclude this video. Thank you so much.